the story? The story today, folks, is Cosa Stranel. This is the 1990 model, so it's in its 22 years of anniversary. Uh, this is a, a Cabernet Marlot dominated wine uh, from the Saint Estef in Bordeaux uh, from a pretty solid year. It's a super second, but I think it deserves a first place trophy in my book. It's very, very nice. It's certainly one of the top 25 wines produced, uh, or as far as wineries go, is I would put it in the top 25 wineries uh, anywhere in the globe. And oftentimes referred to as a super second because in Bordeaux they have the first growths and then they have the second growths and this is like some of the top wines of the second growth. With a lot of Cabernet, it's usually quite uh, rustic when it's young, but uh, at this age it is developed uh, uh, quite the um, quite the bouquet and the nuance that you, you would look for. Speaking of which, let's talk about that. On the nose, what are you getting? Well, I'm getting kind of loaded because I've already drunk most of this bottle. All right, and I have the lion's share, as you can see, which you're not getting any. On the nose, um, I'm getting something, this sort of, um, it's very aromatic uh, for an older wine, like you're saying, this bouquet that just like, it's, it's huge, huge and massive and crazy and um, mm -hmm. lovely. A lot of earthiness, mm -hmm. a lot of forest uh, floor, a lot of sage, a lot of cooking spices. Um, I get some sort of dense cologne notes as well. You know, it's very, um, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. absolutely fabulous. It's not the, I mean, for those of you who are Cabernet fans uh, from Napa, this is a different animal. It's not a big fruit bomb of well, wine. There is a lot of fruit there. At, at this stage, but, it has as much fruit as you'd find in Napa, uh, but not in the same way. It doesn't, it's not dense, it's not heavy. The alcohol is not big and overpowering. Uh, it's all the the characters of the wine are almost transparent in which you can see the different levels of flavor and the different nuances going on mm -hmm. as if you can actually physically see the wine as opposed to just in the mind tasting it. This wine is deep, folks. It's deep. Deep. We like deep. Right here. Right here. On the palate. What are you getting? Again, that forest note, a little bit of mm. more cooking spices, leaning toward the sage element. I'm getting also some uh, sort of robust, sort of dark cherry mm -hmm. um, in terms of fruit flavor there. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of like boysenberry. Mm -hmm. um, just, just very, very nice. Um, and ever so hint of vanilla in the background. Yeah, yeah, uh, a little bit to soften it up and round it out a bit. Almost not like vanilla bean, mm -hmm. it's more like just a touch of, you know, someone put vanilla in the, in the baking, you know, just mm -hmm. a, something in the background. Um, nothing is overpowering here. All the flavors no. and the acidity, if there's any left, any of the um, structure -y, you know, the, well, the flavors you know, and stuff, they're all transparent. It's, all it's one of those wines, though, honestly, where it's got to a point where it's a bit difficult to describe. It is, because there's you know? so much going on, but right. yet nothing really is dominant. Mm -hmm. Nothing's really... It is what it is, folks, and it is lovely. It is Beautiful good. and gorgeous, and um, there's... Uh, it's great. Speechless. Speechless. Doesn't happen often, but it's no, it doesn't. <laughs> Cheers to that. All right, hey, folks. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Bonsoir.